blocked or locked, and the dead could not get out. The Imperial Food Products Plant has not been inspected by anyone officially in 11 years of operation. New York State Senate Minority Leader Manfred Orenstein has the weight of justice off of his back tonight. Criminal no-show job charges against him are dropped by Manhattan DA Robert Morgenthau, who feels the charges would not hold up in court. The court had previously ruled in Orenstein's favor regarding other matters in the case. The 66-year-old Democratic leader says he's gratified that he's been vindicated. The Westchester teacher, who was having an affair with a woman accused of murdering his wife, won't be back in the classroom this fall. The Edgemont Board of Education voting to remove Paul Solomon. A dog relieving itself in the wrong yard led to a deadly shootout between two sets of brothers on Staten Island yesterday. 34-year-old Brian Collins is being charged with the murder of 21-year-old Christopher Marola in a wild shootout. Police say the shootout started after the Collins dog urinated in the Marola bushes. When the smoke cleared, Christopher Marola was dead and 43-year-old James Collins and an innocent bystander were wounded. 29-year-old Ralph Marola was also arrested for possession of a weapon. A pistol-packing octogenarian brought a crowded Amtrak train to a screeching halt today between Albany and New York City. 80-year-old Shalaman Abashian thought he had missed his stop on the train, but he didn't get up and ask the conductor as most people would do. Instead, police say he got so upset he took out a gun and fired 10 shots into the ceiling. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but the train had to stop to get the bullets out. Bashian is under arrest tonight. And made his stop, no doubt. Well, commuters in New Jersey have something to smile about tonight. In an effort to get more people to use mass transit, the train system is picking up steam. Veronica Mitchell has that story. You might call it a day of first at the Hoboken train terminal. For the first time ever, New Jersey Transit is offering direct train service to Hoboken for passengers living in the south and central part of the state. And for the first time in 25 years, New Jersey Transit is expanding train service to the northern New Jersey area. New Jersey Governor Jim Florio says both moves are long overdue. What we're trying to do is to encourage mass transportation in New Jersey. We figure if we can get more cars off the road and more people into on-time trains and buses that are clean and affordable, we'll be relieving congestion, but we'll also be cleaning the air. The Waterfront Connection Rail Service is only making a maiden run this afternoon. But when the service is fully operating, it will consist of 12 trains picking up passengers first in Bayhead, New Jersey, then making several stops at shore points along the Jersey coastline before terminating in Hoboken. Once in Hoboken, commuters have the option of hopping a ferry to cross the Hudson to Manhattan. But Hoboken Mayor Patrick Fasculi is hoping that at least some of the 1,400 commuters decide to stay on his side of the river. We're very happy and it also represents new economic opportunities with the increased uh, pedestrian traffic for the local retailers. So it's a very good day for Hoboken. The Transportation Trust Fund and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey are footing the bill for the $16 million rail project. Senator Frank Lautenberg believes the waterfront connection is only a small taste of the future of mass transit in the Garden State. What we want to do is have New Jersey with a single rail network so that you can go from the north to the south, and the west to the east by rail. The waterfront connection will start providing regular passenger service beginning Monday, September 9th. To entice riders to use the train, New Jersey Transit is even throwing in some special promotional fares good through December 31st. In Hoboken, I'm Veronica Mitchell, Channel 11 News at 10. We live in an age of couch potatoes, remote control, and cable TV. We sure do. And the drive-in movie, sad to say, is fast becoming a thing of the past. Tonight, the curtain is going down on the last drive-in in New Jersey, and our Ed Miller is there for the sad event. Ed? Well, it's all over. The scientist has been caught in the giant spider web. That was the first movie. Vincent Price is the fly. Now Jane Mansfield is up on the screen strutting her stuff. But once these films are over tonight, it won't just be the end of the movies. It'll be the end of the Route 35 drive-in, one of the last drive-in theaters anywhere in the country. The end of the drive-in, the end of an era. The drive-in movie, a piece of Americana celebrating America's love affair with the car and our love of Hollywood make-believe. New Jersey gave us the very first drive-in movie in the country, in Camden, back in 1933. 
for the past 35 years here, the Route 35 drive-in has been the source of cheap entertainment, a part of American history that many abandoned long ago. The very phrase drive-in movie conjures up nostalgic images of Bobby Sockers smooching in the back seat and movies like Godzilla vs. King Kong. Those who came here tonight for this final performance came with a bag full of popcorn and a bag full of memories. When I was younger, uh, we used to get our pajamas on and my father used to get us all into the car and we used to come for the night and uh, kind of fall asleep in between the movies. Sneaking people in, <laughs> you know, in the trunk and under the blanket in the back seat, you know, hiding them when you're coming in through the door. It's a shame that they're getting rid of it, though, because, like, they don't have any more. This is where, like, girls go with their boyfriends and, you know, <laughs> where teenage memories are made, you know? We grew up with this, you know, back in the 50s and 60s. We lived for Friday and Saturday night at the drive-in. Kids can't go any place to learn about the birds and the bees anymore. Uh, it's also the last place in the world that uh, people can go smoke a cigarette and go watch a movie. Proceeds from tonight's final showing going toward the Raritan High School. And just in case uh, you don't uh, get the picture here, what is replacing this drive-in movie is a 12-plex, an indoor movie theater. And by the way, this car that we're sitting in is a 1963 Ford Galaxy, courtesy of our guest, uh, Rob Cusimano of Union Beach. Reporting live, I'm Ed Miller. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Ed. It brings back memories on my first date of the drive-in in a convertible. Oh, yeah? What happened? Smooching in the back seat <laughs> and popcorn. Never saw the movie, huh? <laughs> well, up ahead.